This is Josh White with JW Math Tutoring. Today's video is going to focus on Desmos hacks that you can use to solve questions in the digital SAT, specifically Blue Book Practice Tests 1 and 2. So let's go ahead and get right to it. But life is a dream the calculus could never predict. First question we're going to take a look at here is number 13 from practice test one in the Blue Book app, module one. And this is an exponential function. They tell us the problem. So I'm going to show you how you can just solve this quickly and easily doing an exponential regression. So you just go ahead, we make a table. Type in all the values. Now, we're just going to define, so the n in this case is equal to the y1, and the t is equal to the x. All right, so here we have our, <coughs> here we have our exponential regression, and we wanna see which matches the answer choices that we have. So first of all, notice in front of the parentheses, in other words, in front of the number being raised, to the x minus to the x1 value or to the t, we have 604.002. Okay, it's obviously not exactly 604 because it is because of some rounding with the answers. So uh, that tells us right away that it's going to be answer choice C. And we can also confirm that the b value, you know, inside here. 1.004 inside the parentheses. So that also matches with answer choice C as well. I mean, that eliminates A and D. Um, technically, B meets that criteria, but B doesn't have the 604 out front. So you can just type these three points in, do an exponential regression, and then just match up the parts. You know, the A in front is the 604 right here, and then the B in the parentheses, 1.004. So correct answer is just letter C, and that's it. Here we have uh, same, practice test one, module one, blue book app, number 22. And this one we're just going to solve by graphing both equations and using a slider. So you notice here, it didn't give me the option to add the slider right away, so I can just type C equals whatever number, and then just, you know, whatever. I'll just set the default parameters, negative 10 to 10. Okay, so now I'm just looking for uh, the intersection of the horizontal line and the parabola at exactly one point. Notice that's going to happen at the vertex up here, okay, at 10.125. So it looks like I need to increase my C value, so whatever, I'll just jump it up to 30. All right, right around there, we'll zoom in. Okay, 20.6, too much, 20, too low. So we'll go 20 to 20.5, maybe like 0 0.01. Getting closer, getting closer. If we zoom in, it looks like, yes, right here we have exactly one point of intersection. Uh, notice if I go just basically one hundredth below, now when I click on it, there's two dots i.e. they intersect twice, it's too low. Or if I go one thing above, notice there's no intersection. You could, If you zoom in, you can see that there's white between it still. Here's the vertex, but here's the li horizontal line above it. So that means correct answer is just 20.25. That's your value of C. You could also technically grid this in um, in its fraction form if you wanted to do 81 divided by 4. Um, that would be correct as well. Next question is from practice test one, module number uh, 2B, the harder of the uh, two second modules. Question number 20. This problem, I'm going to show you how you can solve this very quickly, doing actually a regression on the mean of those values. So basically in this problem, you're given nine of 10 numbers that form a set of data. They want to know what the 10th number is, and they give you some conditions. You know, they basically tell you that uh, these nine numbers have a mean of 42, which you could just get by adding up, and 
when you add in the tenth number, um, the mean becomes an int it stays an integer, so no decimal, and it's greater than 42. So 43 or 44, you know, whatever, 45, whatever it could be. And they want to know what is the largest integer from data set A going to be. So basically what we need to do is we need to find what the other integer is. What's the tenth integer that's not given to us? So you can do this quickly and easily just by doing the mean of all of these values that were given, except we're going to do a regression on it. So first of all, confirm for the nine values means 42. Okay, now I'm just going to add in B. That's my unknown value. But I'm going to do a regression here by doing the tilde, and I'm going to say the mean of all these numbers with B has to be now an integer greater than 42. So let's try 43. Okay, so B comes back as 52. So it looks like that could be the correct answer. But let's just try 44 or 45, see if any of those other ones work. Well, for 44 to be the mean, the 10th uh, number would have to be 62. That's not possible because the problem tells us that this data set consists of n 10 integers positive, which are all less than 60. So 62 is not going to work. And if you even go in, obviously you can't go any further because 45 would make it 72, 46, you know, 82, and so on and so forth. So it has to be 43 as the new mean, which means the missing value has to be 52. And of course, you can just look at this and realize, well, what's the largest value of all these? Well, obviously it's 52. You know, all the others are less than 50. So, bring up the calculator, we're gonna graph the first function, which is the quadratic, and then let's expand this. Second one, okay, I'm going to add a slider for A. Now, what you have to do is you basically have to fool with this until they only intersect one point. So notice here, right now they currently intersect at two points. So notice if I increase these values, it's still two points. So now I'm going to have to decrease these values. So I keep going, keep going, keep going. And it looks like right around, somewhere around here, like negative 8, maybe it's negative 8 point something. You know, you, I mean, you can zoom in even closer just to see uh, where exactly it happens. But it looks like right around here. And the intersection point is like maybe right here, yeah, at 6. So the point is, if you look at uh, the possible answer choices, I mean, clearly it's not going to be negative 8. It's clearly not going to be negative 6. You know what I'm saying? Those are way over on the other side of the x-axis. So you look at now 6 versus 8. Okay, here it looks like they're intersecting one time at 6. You know, for them to intersect at 8, 8 is like way up here on the quadratic at positive 24. And... The only way the line gets up there, okay, here the line is now intersecting at this point, but if you scroll down, you can see it's obviously intersecting at another one. But again, and, but again, the problem, they tell us it intersects at exactly only one point. So here you just have to use a slider if you want to use the Desmos calculator to eventually get A to the point where you can see they only intersect once, and then that just confirms that the value is, an X value of that point is 6. Okay, next up we have a question from practice test two. Uh, this is from module 2B, the harder of the two uh, second modules. It's problem number 15, and for this, uh, all we're going to do is a basic linear regression, but there is one fact that you have to know or have to recognize. So you could just type in the points as they're given here. Put decays and everything, and you could. So we're going to do a linear regression. Except the problem is uh, they have to have a value for k. Now k can't just be any random value because it tells us in the problem here the y-intercept of this line is k minus five comma b. So you have to know that a y-intercept is always of the form zero comma b. Therefore, k is going to equal five. So what that tells us is we can now just put in this uh, slider technically here setting k equal to 5. Now we can do the linear regression 
Okay, what is B? What is the y-intercept of this line? Well, it's just 33, and that's the correct answer. So 33, and we can just get it by doing that um, and move on. You don't have to do any work or manipulation or like subtract and find the slope or any of that stuff. You can just plug everything right into Desmos and get your answer that way. Now, an alternate way you could do this is you could go to Desmos and you could just graph out the whole thing. Okay, so here, let's scroll down. So let's see. So here's the thing, though, that you have to remember um, or be careful with if you're doing this in Desmos. So first of all, these are the actual like roots or solutions here. We've got negative 13, negative 8, and 0. Okay, eight is, uh, 0 is not going to be um, a possibility because it tells us here that B is a positive constant. 0 is not positive, so we can eliminate that. Then you're down to negative 8 or negative 13. Remember, though, these are like the zeros, the roots, or the solutions. So these are the opposite values of what would actually be in the factor, right? In other words, if you set this equal to 0 and you solved it, you would get x equals negative 13 and negative 8. But you have to remember that here, they're, the b value they're asking for is not the root, not the solution. It's the factor. So therefore, you have to remember that the negative 8 technically means you factor it as x plus 8. And the negative 13 means you factor it as x plus 13. Okay, so again, you can do this in Desmos um, if you're having difficulty factoring it, but just remember that you're going to actually want the opposite of the values you see here. In other words, the B values are going to potentially be positive 13 and positive 8. Here's how we could do this using Desmos. So let me clear the screen, bring up the calculator, expand it out. All right. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph the left side and I'm going to graph the right side. Now to get the square root, we have to go down here to the keyboard. And I'm going to use a slider for C. Okay, for right now we'll just let it equal to 1. So there's the left side. Here is the uh, graph of the right side. Okay, so we're looking for solutions to this equation. So when we uh, basically do this, we graph both sides. And just zoom out here so we can get a better picture. There we go. So we graph the left side, we graph the right side, and where they intersect, you know, where both sides are equal, that is, those are the solutions to the equation. So now notice I set the c value equal to 1 and it tells us in the problem c is a positive constant so that that matches so far. So we have two solutions. Basically we have like negative let's see here negative 39.013 and positive 39.013. All right, so plus or minus 39.013. So now we need to do is take our value of c which is 1 plug it into the answer choices and see which answer choice matches one of these two numbers. So in the first uh, answer choice, it would just be negative 1. Does that match, you know, 39.013, positive or negative? No. Get rid of it. Second answer choice, c squared, well, 1 squared is 1, so it's negative 1 minus 39 squared. You know, does that match? Does that equal 39.013? No, obviously not, but you could do it in Desmos just to confirm. Third one, we have negative square root 39 squared minus 1 squared. So this obviously you don't know, probably don't know what it is in your head. So you just go ahead and type it in. Okay, so this comes out to negative 38.987. Uh, that is close to 39.013, but it is not the exact number. So this is wrong. Now we'll check the last one, and we've got 1 squared plus 39 squared added together under a radical. So I'm just going to go back here.
Get rid of this. Okay, now we get our answer. Negative 39.0128, and notice if I round it off, it rounds off to 0 0.013. So this, uh, so therefore D is the correct answer. This confirms it. And again, all I did is I entered both sides of the equation. I picked a value for C. I looked at what the solutions were on the graph in Desmos, and then I plugged that C value into the answer choices to see which answer choice gave me the same solutions that uh, the graph in Desmos did. All right, the next question is from practice test two, module 2B, harder of the two second modules. It is the very last question, number 22. It deals with a quadratic function, and they give you some information about it, uh, specifically that the negative nine uh, value, when you plug negative nine in for x, that corresponding y value is equal to the y value you get when you plug positive three in for x. However, we can figure this entire thing out and look at both of these conditions, determine which of them must be true entirely in Desmos. And we can do it, qu uh, qu in it quite quickly. So first, I'm gonna type in the function as given, not adding any sliders. And now I'm going to do basically the regression on setting these two y values equal to each other. So notice when I do that, it turns out that a must equal 0.6666667, or it's basically two thirds. You could you know, type that all out if you weren't sure. Um, so does a have to be greater than or equal to one? No, so two is not true. So we can get rid of that, we can get rid of that. All right, now let's go ahead and look at uh, the C value. Does C have to be less than zero? So notice here in uh, this, uh, this little regression that I did, it gave me C equals zero. So it looks like that um, this one is not true at all. This one is not true either, number one. So the cor correct answer is going to be D, but let's just confirm that by doing the following. Let's change this up. Let's put the two thirds in that we found, and now let's add the slider for C. Okay, so notice initially this is the same exact function that we did we just had on the screen. Now, it tells us here that the parabola opens upward, so okay, that's good. Um, and it also tells us that k, the y coordinate of the vertex, is less than zero. Okay, so now when I go back to the graph, does c have to be less than zero? No, there are tons of values for c here where the y coordinate of the vertex, you know, right here is still negative, but c is not less than zero. Okay, so yes, it's true c is less than zero, but it does not have to be true. You know, as soon as like all these values right here still meet the conditions of the of the problem. In fact, you eventually go into like c equals six, where it um, you know, doesn't meet the conditions anymore. So therefore, this is false, uh, or not, it doesn't have to be true. Therefore, we can get rid of this. Correct answer is going to be letter D. So that's how you can solve this problem entirely uh, in Desmos, you know, without doing um, any other algebra work.